Multiple young people surround an Asian man. They strike him in his head and he falls to the ground. China is lying to us to actively hurt us, actively kill our people and people in many other countries. But China, it would seem, is actively trying to hurt us. And China is lying so they can come out on top. They want us to be hurt, not just the United States, but Australia and countries in Europe as well. We have to stop trusting them. China is responsible for starting it and lying about it so we couldn't respond properly. It's China that's caused this problem, not Donald Trump. The real adversary here is China. They are actively trying to hurt us still and covered this up. I would say they're actively trying to kill us. They're trying to actively hurt us. China is trying to kill us and many others. China, 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 China. This is propaganda. I'm Nathan Rich, aka Cool World Da Wong. Today I want to talk to you about an interesting video by a man called Tim Pool. He's a political and news commentator who's been known to be fair and relatively balanced when it comes to representing the facts. But recently he's gone further and further into this realm of conspiracy type thinking. And he's gone so far in that direction now that I have to debunk this video that he made about China because it's so filled with provable lies and mistruths that I simply cannot allow someone with a platform that big to push out this propaganda. Now, unlike most people that I debunk, I personally don't think that Tim Pool is a bigot or a racist or is acting intentionally in bad faith in general. But in this video, he very, very clearly is acting in the worst faith possible and assuming the worst at every chance that he gets. And we're gonna see exactly how low his bar for research is. Tim Pool has an extraordinarily high level of responsibility when it comes to doing due diligence before making accusations. And as we're gonna see from this video, he has done no research and is just falling in line with the mainstream media in just blaming China with little or no evidence. But don't take my word for it. Let's check this out. The Chinese government has been lying every step of the way. These lies resulted in a delayed reaction from our country and many others, which resulted in a loss of control and a major loss of life. Okay, so this is the same conspiracy theory I've debunked time and time again. It's just based on speculation and very little or no facts. But here's where Tim throws in his own spin to the situation and makes this conspiracy theory much grander and more complex and complicated. But now we have evidence to suggest that China is lying to us to actively hurt us, dare I say, actively kill our people and people in many other countries. So he's attributing intent and malice, two things that are very hard to prove. So I'm looking forward to this very solid evidence that he has that all of China or all of the Chinese government is not only lying, but also is doing it on purpose and they're doing it because they want to hurt people. At least one journalist and, and probably many others are praising China over their response. That's because, Tim, China's response to COVID-19 has been, as far as we know by the facts that we have, the fastest response. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of that evidence during this video. So this first piece of evidence that he gives us is that Chinese people overseas working in Chinese companies were asked by people in China to send them medical supplies. Well, these companies were sending millions of pieces of medical equipment back to China. We were being told by people like Bill de Blasio in New York to go out. It's fine. As late as uh, March, the mayor of New York was saying everything's fine. Now New York is the epicenter. Ah, uh, yes. Bill de Blasio notable Chinese government official. But what does China have to do with the US government downplaying the outbreak in March? I mean, in order for that claim to hold any water, you would have to be able to prove that the United States government didn't know or didn't have sufficient warning that this outbreak was coming and was going to be serious. But unfortunately, Tim, I can prove just the opposite. And you offer no evidence to support that. So now he goes back to these Chinese people sending supplies back to China to help their friends and family. Sourcing bulk supplies of surgical masks, thermometers, antibacterial wipes and hand sanitizers, gloves, and Panadol for shipping. All employees were asked to source whatever medical supplies they could, and even receptionists were sent on a mission to find bulk supplies. of. Now, why would, would an employee be sourcing medical supplies? Because China knew this was going on from January to February. Correct. China knew. 
China knew it was experiencing a massive outbreak. You're talking about January to February. Look at the graph of cases between January and February. The numbers are skyrocketing. Here in China during this time, no one could find any medical supplies. Everyone was buying them up and hoarding them. So what happened is people started calling overseas. Anyone, please send us more masks, send us more supplies. A huge vacuum was created. You can chalk this up to a bit as a major blunder from these countries, not realizing they would need these supplies in the future. But China has been lying to us the whole time. And because of this, many people probably thought it wasn't a big deal. We're going to help China. We don't need these things. It's not that bad. Your weird argument here seems to be that February 14th, people didn't know there was a danger because China lied, which you still haven't proven. I don't know how you say that people didn't know that there was a threat when on February 14th, there were over 66,000 confirmed cases. What are you talking about? By February 14th, the day you're talking about, these are the things that the whole world knew about the outbreak. It was spreading quickly. It was transmissible. It was retransmissible. At least 24 countries had infections. It was in the air, in aerosol. It was found in feces. And tests could fail up to 10 times before eventually saying that somebody did have the virus. And we knew that the incubation period period was up to 24 days. All of this was widely reported before the day that you're pretending like nobody had any idea anything bad was going on. The UK believes that the official numbers they've put out are wrong, and it could be 15 to 40 times worse than what they're actually saying. The Chinese cases are certainly higher than what we know. That's because they haven't discovered them all. Some of them may not have been reported by the person who actually has them. And China doesn't consider some, most, or all cases which are asymptomatic to be confirmed cases. So the way they're reporting it is different than some other countries. And if we hold the way that they are reporting it as their standard of truth, it does appear that the confirmed cases lines up with what they're saying. But let's just forget all that and go with you completely. 100% of everyone in China, including myself, has COVID-19. Okay, so wh what's your point? Which would mean we're in this for the long haul. We're in this and things are going to get bad. Uh, no, it doesn't mean that. No matter how many cases France has, for example, it doesn't affect how many cases South Africa has. South Africa can choose to take measures based off of their advisories and public information. And the public information at this point in time in your story is that it was spreading extremely quickly and had spread to 24 countries and all the other stuff that I mentioned. It doesn't matter what China says at this point in your timeline. So this point that you're talking about makes no sense. In Italy, they're already seeing a breakdown of social order. They're seeing the same thing in China. And this is arguably the stupidest thing I've heard anyone say about this. The social fabric of China's breaking down? What are you talking about? Have you even seen my videos? It's restoring to normalcy. There's more and more people outside. Stores are open. Schools are coming back. Everything is turning back on. What are you talking based on what? And China is lying so they can come out on top. They want us to be hurt, not just the United States, but Australia and countries in Europe as well. We have to stop trusting them and we have to protect ourselves. Yes, you said this already, and now you're just supporting nationalism. These are bold claims that require bold evidence, but you don't have any. In a tweet from January 14th, the World Health Organization said, preliminary investigations conducted by the Chinese authorities have found no clear evidence of human to human transmission of the novel coronavirus identified in Wuhan, China. This is propaganda. Is it? Or is it the case that the preliminary investigation didn't find clear evidence of human to human transmission. I mean, that's to me sounds a lot more likely than China's controlling the WHO and they're lying about this for unknown reasons so that they can hurt people. You need proof for that type of wild claim. And for some reason, you didn't mention this. On the 15th, the next day, the Wuhan Health Commission said, actually, it turns out that human to human transmission may be possible. Why didn't you say that, Tim? I mean, how long did this tweet make everybody wait until they knew the truth? 24 hours? I mean, okay. We have a timeline of events. And now you say that you've got a timeline and then you show a little web page with some garbage written on it. And this is the National Review and the name of this article 
that for some reason you're assuming is going to be unbiased is the comprehensive timeline of China's COVID-19 lies. Oh, that sounds so unbiased, doesn't it? That's not a timeline, Tim. This is a timeline. What you're showing us is a hit piece filled with lies and mistruths that you are just spreading across the world. But we're going to get into that. And on December 25th, according to the National Review, they say Chinese medical staff in two hospitals in Wuhan are suspected of contracting viral pneumonia and are quarantined. This is additional strong evidence of human to human transmission and not even the first. Ah, uh, yes. The doctors of the 25th of December. If you actually look at what you're telling the world is definitely true, you'll see that this is a National Review page that's referring to a blog post that has no audio or video that says that a lady who was a doctor said that someone told her that these doctors were infected. Wow, that is so rock solid. My God, we should just tell the whole world that this is definitely a fact. And then you say, oh, it's not even the first one. It's interesting how you skipped over all the other items. So let's go through those, Tim. Let's go through the source that you are using to share to your thousands and thousands and thousands of viewers, okay? This is what you, Tim, are telling people. The first one is reported here as the sixth. Remember, you just told everybody that this is the first one. So let me just go through this timeline a little bit and debunk it and show how much lies and misinformation you, Tim Pool, are sharing with the world. So first it says that the outbreak started at the wet market. I'm gonna make this very clear for you because sometimes I speak in absolute terms and it's a little bit difficult to understand what I'm saying. So I'm gonna be very, very clear. Based solely on the facts that we have today, if no new facts come, then there is no possibility that it started at the market. Because even this hypothesized unsourced case in November 17th had nothing to do with the wet market. The next first case in December 1st had nothing to do with this wet market. And the next first case, which was December 8th, had nothing to do with this wet market. Now, in the real world, it may have started at this wet market, but based on the facts that we know, it didn't. If those facts change as we get more information, then that may open up more opportunity that it did. But again, based on the facts that we have today, this is impossible. And now look at this beautiful thing that you've just shared to the world. Assuming for some reason that the Nationalist Review is gonna be totally honest about their little timeline. The first patient identified was December 1st, dot, dot, dot. Five days later, his wife, who had no exposure to the market, also became ill. In other words, as early as the second week of December, Wuhan doctors were finding cases that indicated the virus was spreading from one human to another. My God, good job, Tim, you've nailed it. Now, let's actually read that study, shall we? The symptom onset date of the first patient identified was December 1st, dot, 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 five days after illness onset, blah, blah, blah. But look at the text that they, for some reason, didn't include, especially this part that says, the first fatal case was admitted to a hospital five days after his illness onset, his wife. And when was the first fatal case, Tim? Do you think it was December 1st, 2019? Let's look at a real timeline to see when that first fatal case was. Oh, it was January 10th. Tim, not December 1st. That means that what they're calling December 6th here is actually a month later. This first evidence is a lie. It says clearly that the person got infected on the 1st and then five days later his wife something something, which isn't true. That's not what the Lancet says. The Lancet says there was a case on the 1st, period. New subject, the first fatal case his wife, five days later, had symptoms. That's almost a month later, Tim. Gee, what a shocker that the National Review is misleading you, Tim, and you didn't even bother to click the link. And then here on December 21st, National Review says, Wuhan doctors began to notice a cluster of pneumonia with an unknown cause. They began to notice it. Wow, what an important word. Nope. 
doesn't say that. Tim, what it says is a cluster of pneumonia cases with an unknown cause occurred in Wuhan starting on December 21st, 2019. It doesn't say that they noticed it. It doesn't say that they knew about it. It doesn't say that there was this big cover up. It just says that that's when it began. And the 23rd is when they actually did notice something was wrong because they collected the virus on the 23rd of December based on factual evidence. Then they uploaded it the 24th of December. And by the 27th of December, Dr. Zhang had told the hospital something was going on. This seems to be from an unknown cause. Sometime in late De December, Wuhan hospitals notice an exponential increase in the number of cases that cannot be linked back to the Hunan seafood wholesale market. I mean, Tim, you do know that the orange text here are links, right? What you do is you move the mouse until this little arrow is over this orange text, and then you stroke one of the buttocks of the mouse, and then magically you'll see the source. So let's do that yet again for this one. You'll notice by this diagram that the beginning of exponential case rise, not related to the market, didn't in fact seem to happen in December unless you consider these two little blocks. It looks more like it happened January 1st. But even if you do consider these two little blocks, that would be at the very earliest you could possibly describe it as December 29th, which by the way, is probably why they put that right before December 30th. They knew that, but chose to continue this vaguely worded late December. So let's take a look at what was going on December 29th. The Hubei Hospital of Chinese and Western Medicine began reporting the situation to provincial, municipal, and district disease control centers. Patients were transferred, quarantines began, and a field investigation began that day. So I don't know where's the lying and the cover up and the hiding of everything. This is the beginning of an investigation. Something's going on. We've uploaded a virus up. Oh, we're seeing more cases. Investigate. Wow, that's fast. On December 30th, Dr. Li Wenliang sent a message to a group of other doctors warning them about a possible outbreak of an illness that rese resembled SARS urging them to take protective measures against the infection. Yes, he posted about it in a WeChat group. I've already talked about this extensively, but there was an investigation going on and he was spreading information that wasn't totally accurate. And by the way, he was telling them not to tell other people, presumably because he knew what he was doing probably violated some kind of law, or maybe he knew the investigation was actually happening. We don't know. And he was upset when the information got spread. And later, the Chinese government said that had they listened to this person, while it wasn't accurate what he was saying, at least more lives would have been saved. So they admitted fault in this case. On December 31st, the Wuhan Municipal Health Commission declares the investigation so far has not found any obvious human to human transmission and no medical staff infection. This is the opposite of the belief of the doctors working on patients in Wuhan. And two doctors were already suspected of contracting the virus. They were allegedly suspected by someone who talked about it later, having said that they heard that someone else knew of something. So, I mean, that could be true, Tim, but that's not enough to say that it definitely is true. And you've offered zero evidence to suggest that the government of China knew anything about this before the 27th of December, 2019. Three weeks after doctors first started noticing the cases, China contacts the World Health Organization. Three weeks, huh? Wow, that is fast. I mean, that must be a world record, Tim, honestly. I mean, this is a totally ridiculous standard to hold because just because because you get a case doesn't mean magically you should go and tell the WHO. You need to confirm that there's a cluster, that it's an unknown source. You have to identify this, investigate all this stuff that happens. But let's just use your standard, okay? The first time that there's any case that any doctor notices to the time that the WHO is notified. Let's compare this to, for example, H1N1. You say it took three weeks from the first case to notifying the WHO. It took the United States five weeks to do the same notification from its first case of the H1N1. But forget about that standard. How about the earliest verifiable time that the national CDC knew the situation to the time that they reported it to the WHO? It's a little bit more fair. We know for a fact that the national Chinese CDC 
knew about the situation December 30th. December 27th was municipal. When did they tell the WHO? 24 hours later, Tim. And how long do you think it took the United States to tell the WHO after it had confirmed what was going on with the H1N1 virus? Five days. Are you starting to understand why your confusion as to why people are saying this is fast is irrelevant? It was fast. How many hundreds of thousands of lives would have been saved if the United States had acted faster? or even just as fast as China. I mean, where's your video exposing the United States for intentionally trying to kill everyone? Or do you think the evidence isn't strong enough, Tim? Why? Dr. Lee signed a statement acknowledging his misdemeanor and promising not to commit further unlawful acts. China was arresting people who were warning this was spreading. No one was arrested for this. They were detained and asked to sign a paper, and they did and then they went back to work. They then told the World Health Organization that there's no evidence. Why? Because there was no clear evidence. So, I mean, why do you keep going on about this? The most time that could have been saved based on what you keep bringing up is 24 hours, which if we add 24 hours to all of the timeline that China took, it still would be faster than the United States response. Way faster. I mean, what, what are you talking about? Because they wanted to source supplies from other countries so they could save themselves first. I don't know what to say to you, dude. You're just completely abandoning facts. You're not even bothering to click links and see what was actually said. And then you're just regurgitating this stuff out to the world. When you say this kind of stuff, it feeds into xenophobia. And I know you don't care about that, Tim, because you feel like you're saying something more important than that. If you're gonna say something that you know is going to fuel people to have more hate towards not just a government, but a race, a culture, a country, and all of their fellow Chinese workers and and friends, you know that's going to happen. You have to have concrete facts. You have to have done your research, Tim. You can't be this irresponsible. It's not appropriate for somebody with a platform of your size. Surely you can admit that after seeing just this video. In the next video, I'll destroy the rest of your ridiculous argument and show not only are you ignoring facts as we see here, you're using some of the strangest, weird, double standard logic I've ever seen in my life and you may not realize this, Tim, but as I'll show in the next video, you are also claiming that the United States is actively trying to kill you. So until then, thanks everybody. See ya.